So what are the best books when it comes to breath work, breathing, respiration? It's a question we get all the time and I've compiled a list of you with something for everyone. There's 20 titles here and I'm gonna do my best to give you a little bit of a brief review and insight into each of them. So bear with me, we're gonna jump right into it. First of all, when it comes to the weird and wonderful world of breathing, we must understand that breath work is more of an umbrella term. Okay, there isn't one breath work technique. There isn't one breathing method. There isn't one right way or wrong way to breathe. It is actually a spectrum of ideas, methodologies, principles, protocols put together by some amazing people, right? And we are going to work with the entire spectrum. So on the far right side, we have the more medical, clinical, right? Perspective when it comes to breathing, also quite academic at times. And this is often where we focus on breathing retraining and working with people that have poor breathing habits and how we can restore them. Whereas on the far left, right, where we get a bit left of field, we have more of this category, which I like to call breakthrough breath work, right? We have things like the fireworks, but also the trauma informed practices and really working with the sympathetic nervous system with these more activating techniques more so, okay? So we're gonna start on the right and we'll go on a journey, right, towards the whole spectrum of breathing techniques. So first of all, it's imperative that we understand that people in today's days and age do not breathe well. Okay, it's been documented and shown that 25% of people today have chronic over breathing, stuck in chronic hyperventilation. But even more than that, it's been estimated that 90% of people today have impaired breathing habits, pretty much everyone. And this wasn't always the case. Up to three, 400 years ago, before humans moved away from the more traditional way of life, right, towards the Industrial Revolution, things started to change. And one book that paints an amazing picture and looks into the jaws of people, not only the jaws, but the whole musculoskeletal growth of human beings in the last two, 300 years, will tell you why we're not breathing well. It's called Jaws, okay? The story of a hidden epidemic. It's an awesome book. It's got a lot of photos and insights and experts contributing to it, which is fantastic. I highly recommend it, um, really good. Next up, we have Recognizing and Treating Breathing Disorders. This one is a bit more of a textbook, if you will. This is sort of your DIY, do-it-yourself breathing book at home for those that have more of an academic inclination or really aren't afraid to get stuck in themselves without much guidance from the external and just wanna learn, understand, and get right to work. It's again got a lot of photos, insights. It's written more as a medical textbook and it's quite heavy, but it's very good, very solid. Okay, next up we have actually a friend of mine, Tess Graham here in Australia, who wrote an amazing book. It's called Relief from Snoring and Sleep Apnea. This talks about some of the conditions, some of the ailments that start to arise when people do not breathe well. Okay, namely being sleep disordered breathing. There's some amazing facts and statistics in here. It's, it's, it's a very scary picture to paint, but 50% of men over 50 today will develop sleep apnea. And women after menopause deal with the same consequences, if not worse, okay? So this is preventable. <laughs> it is actually restorable and reversible, and Tess Graham will give you a method as to how to do it, which comes from the Buteyko technique, right? Amazing, fascinating stuff. So next up, I've got two books here that are a little bit more oriental, <laughs> a little bit more ethereal, if you will, and some people like that perspective on breathing much more than these sort of more clinical side of things, right? This one's called Let Every Breath, and it's about Sistema. Sistema is a breathing martial art from Russia, from the East. Um, that's fascinating. It talks about people that are able to have incredible impact on their bodies and not bruise, right? It talks about people that have physical feats that we perceive not to be possible for the everyday person. Show incredible resilience, incredible strength, incredible endurance, all through a breathing-based martial art. It's called Let Every breath. There's another one which is more for people that are interested in the Eastern traditions of yoga and things of that nature. This one's called Science of Breath and it's um, about a guy called Swami Rama. So let me give you the lowdown. People laughed at the image of a pretzel-legged yogi focusing on the tips of his nose until Swami Rama walked into a laboratory and showed scientists what a yogi with control over his respiration can actually do. Before astonished researchers, he demonstrated perfect control over his heart rate and brainwaves. 
control physiologists hadn't believed humans could possibly achieve. So again, the extraordinary feats shown through the power of breath. This is also a bit of an introduction into pranayama, right? The, or, or the ancient Eastern breathing technique from India. Um, and it's written in collaboration with two medical doctors, which makes it a fascinating little book to check out. Next up, when we start moving from away from the more clinical medical side of things, we have someone who's done an amazing job in translating some older teachings into a more modern jacket, right? Patrick McEwen has taken the work of Dr. Konstantin Buiteko and given it a modern touch in the oxygen advantage. Okay, the simple scientifically proven breathing technique that will revolutionize your health and fitness. The book was written about 10, 15 years ago. Very popular, very successful. An amazing book that talks about that breathing is like learning to breathe better is not just for people that are sick. It's actually for everyone. It can improve performance athletically in the boardroom, in the bedroom and beyond. If you haven't read it yet, highly recommend it. Now, Patrick also wrote a new book in 2020, which is called The Breathing Cure. Very good. This is a bit of a Bible of breathwork. It's actually got 500 pages, okay, of different techniques. And it talks about exercises to develop new breathing habits for healthier, happier, and longer life. Also related to specific conditions. Asthma, children's breathing, breathing for females only. There's a whole chapter in there on that, which is great. COVID, um, exercise, epilepsy, diabetes, mental health, dental health, intimacy, insomnia, pain immobility, panic disorders, you name it, it is in here. It is a fantastic book. He's done a great job at showing the last 20 years of research into the world of breathing, which has been vast, and bringing it into a translatable formula, okay? When we come more towards the middle, which is where we always want to be, right? It's where the actual, the right conversations are happening. Someone who's probably written the best book in the last 10, 20 years or so is James Nestor. Breath is an incredible piece of investigative journalism. It is called the new science of a lost art. He does a fantastic job at actually going out there himself, getting his hands dirty, looking into the world of breathing, trying different things. The book starts with an experiment where he shoots silicon up his nose for 10 days and he stops himself from being able to breathe through his nose, right? And the results are catastrophic, right? It's a disaster what happens in the human body when we can't nasal breathe anymore, but also the reverse. So actually what happens when he unblocks that and starts going around the world, learning from different breathing experts, um, some that are not with us anymore and some that still are today. He does them all great justice and he's written a great book, Breath. If you haven't read that yet, I actually would say this is a good place to begin. Now, before James Nestor wrote Breath, he actually wrote a book called Deep. So just taking a little segue here into the world of free diving and what the ocean has to teach us about our bodies and our breath. This is a great book. Again, investigative journalism, really fun to learn more about the potential that humans have with their breath, right? And actually a little bit of a cult classic in the world of free diving is called The Manual of Free Diving by Umberto Palizzari. He was one of the first, he broke a world record to dive down to 100 meters, um, but he was also an incredible freediving coach and still is today. He's trained some of the world's best freedivers. And this is probably one of the best books today with not only explaining the physiology, um, the anatomy of freediving, but also giving really clear training instructions on how to improve your carbon dioxide tolerance, your breath holds, your lung capacity, and things of such nature. So very good. Anybody that's really looking to get the most out of their breath for their performance, gotta have this one, okay? Next up, the person that James Nestor actually worked with in the book Breath, with the experiment of shutting the nose off, was Anders Olsen. And Anders Olsen probably knows more about the world of carbon dioxide and all its intricacies than anybody else in the world today. He's from Sweden, he's an incredible breathing researcher who's dedicated his life to it. Um, he's wrote a book called Conscious Breathing, Discover the Power of Your Breath. It's very simple, clear, informative, some insights there. Um, highly recommend checking that one out as well. Then I have a little one. This one's called Heart Coherence 365, um, a guide to long-lasting heart coherence. Now I've actually got the summary here, which I think is fantastic. Because essentially in 18 pages, you'll learn everything you need to know about breathing, about the most effective breathing technique for balance, which is called heart coherence. And if there was a technique that could bring us into the middle, right, balancing sympathetic and parasympathetic, left and right, heart and brain, it would be that coherence. Now this book teaches you everything you need to learn the coherence technique and bring it into your life.
Um, someone who's done more for the world of breathing than anyone else in the last 10 years is probably Wim Hof, okay? Again, a personal friend of mine, um, amazing character, of course, very charismatic. Uh, his original books were probably a bit more fun because he wrote them himself, whereas this is clearly written by a Hollywood ghostwriter, um, but it's very good. Uh, it's, it's very insightful and his, his light still definitely shines through it. So if you haven't read the book Wim Hof yet, um, it's the Wim Hof Method, activate your potential and transcend your limits. Um, very great. Last but not least, we're getting to the end here and we're actually moving towards the more left of field now, right? Wim Hof did a great job at translating all their techniques into more modern jackets and bringing the power of these deep breathing techniques back to life, right? Now, when we start looking at what I call breakthrough breathwork techniques, right, which actually also come from the East and also come from many different older traditions, it's important that we bring a trauma-informed perspective. Right? It's important that we educate ourselves on what is actually happening in the body as it processes stressful experiences, which can very much happen through deep rhythmic continuous breathing. Now, the master of this is Peter Levine. His book's called Waking the Tiger Healing Trauma. Okay? Peter Levine lays out a roadmap, a system, a methodology for how the human body processes stressful experiences, including trauma, and also how it can release and clear this, if you will, and find completion. A really fantastic book with lots of great stories. Um, another one is the polyvagal theory. So this talks about the nervous system, which the breath and the nervous system are so closely related, they are almost one and the same. Um, polyvagal theory is written by Stephen Porges, who is a hero in the field of neurobiology, um, but also the science of feeling safe. And that's actually what the book is about. It's the foundations of emotions, attachment, communication, and self regulation. Now, this book is full of citations. It's very academic. I actually recommend you read this one. It's uh, for dummies, <laughs> the pocket guide to the polyvagal theory, which is all transcripts of interviews with Stephen Porches. And he's an incredible speaker and storyteller. So that's actually where I would recommend digging in and learning more about the nervous system. Um, there's two books that I've uh, land out and we all know what happens to books that we land out they don't come back <laughs> but there are two that I wanted to put in there which are great when it comes to the more left of field breathing practices one of them is holotropic breathwork by Stanislav Grov and his wife Christina Grov um, those two have done so much for the world of breathwork today including a lot of research into altered states of consciousness what they call holotropic becoming whole again right these holotropic states of consciousness Fascinating stuff. The book Holotropic Breathwork is great. It's got some incredible photos, images, mandalas and things like that in there. And it gives a really good insight into what happens and where these techniques come from. The other one is called The Manual of Rebirthing, written by Leonard Orr, who was also responsible for bringing old ancient breathing techniques to the West in a very powerful way. There was a very big rise in a wave of these techniques happening in the 60s and 70s. Um, some more informed and modern ways of looking at it. One of them is called Somatic Internal Family Systems and it's about awareness, breath, resonance, movement and touch in practice. And so this is really good for helping us bring breathing into a more clinical counseling type setting. Um, last but not least, the one that I recommend everybody reads that wants to practice the more left of field breathing techniques and integrate some of the fireworks is called Breaking Through with Breathwork by Jim Morningstar. He does an amazing job of teaching us how these deep breathing techniques relate to the brain, the nervous system, trauma, stress, our biology, and also how to integrate them with a more balanced approach into having the whole spectrum of breathing techniques available. And that is actually where I would conclude is saying that don't pick just one, don't limit yourself to one technique, don't let anybody limit you to just one technique. In fact, pick and play, right? Choose, have a wide tool belt, a wide variety of techniques, of understandings, of disciplines, of dogmas, of methods available to you. And that way you will always have a breathing technique on hand and you will actually have a very informed way of communicating with others as well. So I hope there's something in there for you. I hope there's a book that you haven't read yet or maybe many and you got some inspiration. Just start somewhere and please also let me know if there's something I'm missing, right? I'd love to hear what is your favorite breathing book? Is there one that's been really impactful for you? What do you think about the spectrum of breathing exercises? Does this make sense? We'll see you in the next video as we dive a bit deeper into breaking down different breathing techniques in their origins.